mercy. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, it's good to see everybody here. Service, have mercy on us. It's good joy to be here on this Sunday of the Lord. We're celebrating, as you know, the feast of the Dormition of the Mother of God. That's why we have the blue vestments on. We celebrate that for eight days. And today, the Sunday of the Lord, we're given a very beautiful teaching not just a beautiful teaching but something that is you know it's it's we don't think about but maybe maybe we do maybe we don't but it's mentioned six times in the scriptures in the gospels the feeding jesus feeding the people whether it's five thousand or four thousand six times all four gospels mentioned six times overall in the scriptures so that should give us some idea of the importance of this morning's gospel we hear that uh, this you know to give the context of the scripture you know jesus has heard about the beheading of john the baptist he finished his uh, sermon on the mount and so on and he and his disciples went to into the wilderness it says a lonely place but he went into the wilderness into the desert to be alone to be alone and pray to be alone with the disciples and pray for our sins if those we know what happens the crowds come and follow him because they're thirsty and they're hungry not not for physical food but for spiritual food for for the teachings of God and we know that Jesus heals and blesses and teaches them in the wilderness but it is in the wilderness you see and there is it's very significant it's in the wilderness and when when do we hear about the people of God being in the wilderness when do we hear that in the Old Testament when do we hear about that that you Israel's in uh, right in the in the in where where are they in the wilderness where are they journeying to and who are they journeying with guilt and any thoughts and going to the promised land and who's leading them to the promised land Moses right Moses right and we hear in the Old Testament about the Israelites journeying in the wilderness and who provides food for them in the wilderness who provides this special bread does anyone remember what it's called a holy bread well it's called manna manna from heaven right the manna and this bread is given by God to the people of Israel and so that they can make their journey but very interestingly and very characteristically in the wilderness you see God only allows them to gather what they need for that particular day so every day they had to gather the manna for that particular day. But, you know, there were some Israelites that, you know, they were thinking, you know, well, we're not so sure about this. You know, maybe God won't give us manna for tomorrow. They didn't trust God to give them the manna. So they tried to take an extra amount of manna. And guess what happened when they tried to do that? It rotted. It spoiled. It spoiled because they were only allowed to gather what they needed for the day, what they needed for the day. And this is something, again, this is very kind of important. This is this image that's given to us today is very important because our walk in this life is very much like walking in the wilderness, in the desert, you see. Even though we are baptized in the baptismal font and we belong to Christ, you see, we belong to Christ. We are ready, our citizens, God's given us our papers, so to speak, to the kingdom, right? Our citizenship papers to the kingdom. But yet, we have to walk through the wilderness. We have to put our trust in God. And that's very, very important because the wilderness can be very difficult. It can give us all kinds of things. But really, what causes us to stumble is when we don't trust in the Lord. When we don't trust and walk with the Lord and this bread, the bread of life, the bread of life that is given to us, Holy Communion, the bread of life, Jesus's bread, the body, right? That becomes the bread of life. This is what we need. This is the most essential in the important part of our life, right? But God knows, of course, that we also need physical sustenance. And that's why he multiplies the fishes and the loaves. Right? He multiplies them and gives them 5,000 people from five loaves and two fishes. It's amazing. And how many, how many baskets were left over? 
How many baskets? How many tribes were of Israel were there in the wilderness? Twelve. Excellent. Excellent, Stephen. Twelve. Twelve baskets left over. Nothing was wasted. Nothing was wasted. Again, a reminder. Reminder to us about God's will and God wanting us to trust in him. So today, my brothers and sisters, this is, a, again, a very important understanding that we desire the bread of life, the bread of life, the bread that the life giving. And of course, you know, when uh, in the Gospel of John, when we hear about this, you know, Jesus dismisses the crowds and he has to go and hide because they want to make him the king. They want him to make him their king because they he provided this food for them. And this, again, it's, it's a messianic sign that the Messiah would come and provide for his people, just like he did in the Old Testament, just in the, as we hear in the book of Exodus. But that's not the point. Baptism, baptism. Jesus was baptized right after baptism. Where did he go? Right after Jesus was baptized, where did he go? Into the wilderness and he fasted. He fasted for 40 days, it says. And what was the first temptation that came to Jesus after the 40 days? The devil came to him. What did he say? You're hungry. It's these rocks. Change these rocks into bread. And what does Jesus do? He quotes Deuteronomy. He says, man does not live by bread alone, meaning physical bread, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You see, that's the spiritual bread. And that's why we fast too, brothers and sisters, even though we have this kind of appetite and consumer mentality. I mean, everywhere you go, we want to be sold something. We want to be, you know, enticed for something. I mean, food is a very important part. I mean, think of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve weren't hungry, but the devil was tempting them. Oh, you got to try this. This is the good stuff. God is holding back on you. This is the stuff you need. And of course, they fell for it. They fell for it, you see, because they were not seeking the bread of life. And that's why fasting is so important. Fasting is essential because we remember that we live by the word of God. So my brothers and sisters, in our journey in the wilderness, in this life, we have to expect temptation. We're going to get temptation in the wilderness. We have to expect it. We have to expect it. And St. Anthony says, take responsibility for your sins and expect temptation to your last breath. The temptation is going to come because we're in the wilderness. But we know where we're headed. And we're headed. And what sustains us is the bread of life, God's word, holy communion. This is what sustains us. This is what helps us. And I have a beautiful story. I love this story of this is St. Alexander of Comana, who we celebrated this week <clears throat> on the 12th. And I just want to share a little bit about his life because he gives us this kind of example. It was in the town of Comana in near Neo Caesarea, and there was a simple charcoal burner. His job was to feed the furnace with charcoal so that the water could be heated and that so that things could be heated. And when the Bishop of Comana died, St. Gregory of Neo Caesarea, the wonder worker who we commemorate on November 17th was called to preside over the council to choose a new Bishop of Comana. And at the council, there were both clergy and lay people and they were unable to agree upon the person estimating that the candidates they selected according to their outward worth and behavior. They were unable to agree on a candidate for, uh, for to who would be the next bishop. So St. Gregory told them that they must not give so much weight to the outward impression of the soul and the spiritual, but the spiritual aptitude. And then someone called out mockingly, well, then let's choose Alexander, the charcoal burner as bishop. And there was a general laughter among the people. But St. Gregory uh, was thinking that his name would not have come to the council except by the providence of God. So he went and he found the charcoal burner. He was black with soot and rags and his appearance provoked further uh, kind of disappointment from the people. But Gregory took him aside and asked him to tell the truth about his life. 
and Alexander told them that he had been a Greek philosopher enjoying in great honor and position, but he found that to be empty. He found that life to be empty. And so he left everything and put it all aside and made himself a fool for Christ. And from time to time, he had read and understood the Holy Scriptures. So St. Gregory of Neo Caesarea commanded that he be washed and bathed and shaved and got a haircut and, and, and new clothes. And he brought him before the council and he began to question uh, the, uh, Alexander about the Holy Scriptures. And after the questioning of Alexander, they realized, the people realized that Alexander was the one who should be the new bishop. And he became the Bishop of Comana and also a saint in the church. So my brothers and sisters, let us not be fooled by the outward appearance, but the inward journey of the soul, the wilderness that we're all in. Our goal, of course, is to be in communion with God and to lose that sense of anxiety. Anxiety is run rampant. Why? Because we don't trust in the Lord. We don't put our trust in the Lord and like the Israelites. Again, they, we, we are always thinking, well, maybe God won't come through for us. My, they could quote from the psalm. My help is in the name of the Lord. Can anyone finish that? My help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And Jesus tells us that he cares about even the sparrows and even the animals. Will he not more care for us in our salvation? Should we not put our trust in him, the one who made the heavens and the earth. My brothers and sisters, let us not have anxiety, but just the day, trust in the Lord. The day is sufficient. Put your trust in the Lord for today in our communion with God. And let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. And let us not be afraid because the Lord will provide for us. The Lord will, that we put our hope in will uh, give us. He will not neglect us. And he will give us the bread of life. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.